Good morning, welcome to St. Mary's. Please stand and join in our opening hymn, number 780. Sing a new song, number 780. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. Good morning. Amen. Certainly welcome to all as we gather for Mass today. Today we hear about people being faced with making a choice. Do they follow God or the pagans? Do they accept Jesus as the true bread from heaven? Or do they go another way? We express our commitment to the Lord just by coming here to Mass to wanting to be inspired by him and nourished by his very body and blood. So we prepare for these sacred mysteries by calling to mind our sin. We ask God for forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua gathered together all the tribes of Israel at Sechem, summoning their elders, their leaders, their judges, and their officers. When they stood in ranks before God, Joshua addressed all the people. If it does not please you to serve the Lord, decide today whom you will serve. The gods your fathers served beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose country you are now dwelling. As for me, in my household, we will serve the Lord. But the people answered, Far be it from us to forsake the Lord for the service of other gods. For it was the Lord, our God, who brought us to our fathers up out of the land of Egypt, out of the state of slavery. He performed those great miracles before our very eyes, and protected us along their entire journey and among the peoples through whom we passed. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, be subordinate to one another out of the reverence for Christ. Wives should be subordinate to their husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is head of his wife, just as Christ is head of the church. He himself, the savior of the body. As the church is subordinate to Christ, so wives should be subordinate to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and handed himself over for her to sanctify her, cleansing her by the bath of water with the word, that he might present to himself the church in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. So also husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one hates his own flesh, but rather (coughs) nourishes and cherishes it, even as Christ does the church, because we are members of this body. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak in reverence to Christ and the church. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Many of Jesus' disciples who were listening said, this saying is hard, who can accept it? Since Jesus knew that his disciples were murmuring about this, he said to them, does this shock you? What if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life, while the flesh is of no avail. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and life, but there are some of you who do not believe. Jesus knew from the beginning the ones who would not believe and the one who would betray him. And he said, for this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by my Father. As a result of this, many of his disciples returned to their former way of life and no longer accompanied him. Then Jesus said to the twelve, Do you also want to leave? Simon Peter answered him, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we hear about people who are being faced with a moment of decision. In the Old Testament, Joshua asked the people, who will they serve, the pagan gods or the one true God and Father and Lord in heaven. In today's gospel, the crowd of people who are with Jesus face the decision, will they accept what Jesus says 
and continue to be his disciples, or will they choose another way and leave? Some commentators speak about these moments as moments of crisis, a critical moment in which a choice is made and decisive action taken. When I saw this, I thought of a recent experience that about a week and a half or almost two weeks ago, as we were preparing for the start of the school year, um, they had here a, a kind of an in-service or a, a pre-school meeting for the teachers and staff. And in the afternoon, uh, Mrs. Taylor, she had two police officers come to talk about school safety. Sad that we even have to worry about that, you know, here, here and, and these days. But so as the police officers were there, you know, they talked about different things of how, you know, it's important to have a plan that if some, some tragedy or, or, or a, a difficult situation should, should ever uh, arise, that that helps kind of create muscle memory. So you're more inclined to, to respond in an appropriate way. So that's why we have fire drills regularly, you know, and other kind of things like that, kind of to be ready. Yeah, and so, the, so then the one officer speaking, she said it's a similar to like in their training for, to be, be a police person, um, that, that, that they have all kind of training and they practice shooting their gun at the range. And she went on to say that, you know, it, it, so say somebody's really good through practice and training, you know, and on the range they can shoot with maybe 100% accuracy. Well, studies have shown that in a highly stressful situation, that same person might be lucky to shoot 30%. You know, so that just shed, it, shed insights on, you know, sometimes in these kind of shootings or when a police officer is in a standoff with somebody with a gun, you know, some of the sort of common responses, why don't they just shoot for their hand, you know, knock a gun out? It's like just by those statistics, to do that would be nearly impossible. But, but, I, I, but, I, but I thought of that, that it occurred to me that in sort of creating this um, muscle memory or this ability to respond in an appropriate way, that's why the church calls us to pray regularly. That's why the church calls us to receive the body and blood of Christ, to create that sort of mu muscle memory or that spiritual memory so that when we are perhaps faced with temptation and sin, and we will be because we live in a fallen world, when we're faced with that, it's more likely that we'll respond in a godlike manner. In the first reading from the book of Joshua, Joshua has come to the end of his life's journey. He took over for Moses the mission of leading the Israelites through the desert to the promised land. Now they have arrived and are getting ready to enter. God revealed to Joshua that he is about to die. So Joshua gathers all the tribes and people of Israel and sets before them these two fundamental options. They can choose to worship the, the pagan gods, the gods that some of their ancestors worshiped, or the gods of the Amorites, the people of that, the, of that land, or they can choose to honor the Lord. After reviewing the ways that the Lord has led them out of slavery in Egypt and provided for them and, and protected them on their journey, they all proclaim, we will serve the Lord for he is our God. What a, what a statement of commitment at that moment that, you know, they're convinced that that's the right thing to do. In a very different context, today's gospel concludes John chapter 6, Jesus' bread of life discourse. This began with Jesus feeding the hungry crowd with the five loaves and a couple fish. And when they sought after Jesus for, for earthly advantages, Jesus teaches at length things like don't work for food that perishes or that might satisfy only a physical hunger, but work for food that preserves for eternal life. And he taught that he is this bread from heaven. Those who feed on him, those who eat his, his flesh and drink his blood will never die. In today's passage, we hear how many found this to be a hard teaching. They are all faced with a decision Will they accept what Jesus says, or will they walk away? And we hear that many left Jesus and returned to their former way of life. Now, many theologians, scripture scholars, and evangelists use this passage to support our Catholic Church's firm belief and profession in that true presence, that real presence of Jesus, of his body and blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist. 
they say that if Jesus here was speaking figuratively or symbolically, he could have easily gone to the crowd and tried to clarify, oh, I didn't really mean that. You know, I'm just speaking sort of figuratively here. But he doesn't at all. In fact, he seems to stress it even more as he approaches the 12. You know, and they're sort of questioning that. And he asks, do you want to leave me too? Simon Peter responds with this great statement of faith, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. Simon Peter and the rest of the apostles could not have fully understood what Jesus was saying. It is a great mystery. How can Jesus give them his flesh and blood? How can this help them live forever? But we see their great faith by believing that Jesus is the Holy One of God, that He is God, that even though they cannot fully understand how all of, all, all of this can actually happen, they can accept it and believe in it. The early church is filled with people who fully accepted what Jesus said. These are the early Christians and even those um, martyrs of the early church, those who expressed not only in, in word but in so many ways that they were committed to this life in Christ, that no threat of persecution, torture, or even death could get them to deny their conviction that Jesus is the source of eternal life. There also are people like this closer to our own time. Do you know of any of those who are just committed to their faith no matter the trials or uncertainties that they face? One, one, one story that I um, saw that, that, that just highlighted this so clearly that it seems there was this group of Christians gathered for a secret prayer meeting in Russia. It was at the height of the persecution of all Christian churches. Suddenly the door was broken by the boot of a soldier. He entered the room and faced the people with a gun in his hand. They all feared the worst. He spoke, if there is anyone here who doesn't really believe in Jesus, then get out now while you have a chance. There was a rush to the door. A small group remained, those who had committed themselves to Jesus and who were prepared never to run from him. The soldier closed the door after the others, and once again, he stood in front of those who remained with his gun in his hand. Finally, a smile appeared on his face as he turned to leave the room, and he whispered, actually, I believe in Jesus too. You're probably better off without the others. Clearly, Jesus has the words of eternal life. Daily, we face that decision. Will we accept him and be committed to embrace what he teaches? And along those lines of embracing what Jesus teaches, I, I, I think I have to say just a couple words about that second reading today. You know, Paul's letter to the Ephesians, that um, we hear that it comes around once in a while in the cycle of the church readings. On occasion, you might hear it at, at, at a wedding. Um, especially that last part about, you know, leaving father and mother. But so, so um, it can be a troubling. What's this mean about being subordinate, you know, and, and giving to the needs of the other? Allow me to share just a few thoughts offered by a commentator on this passage. So this commentator says, Husbands, when you hear today's second reading, don't start nudging your wives. When you hear Paul say wives should be subordinate to their husbands, First of all, keep in mind that first sentence where Paul says brothers and sisters, meaning both husbands and wives, should be subordinate to one another. And then he goes on saying, you might notice too that Paul is just as demanding and maybe even more so of husbands in this passage than he is of wives as he talks about husbands, how they're called to love their wives as Christ loves his church. When you think about that, it's like Christ gave of himself over and over for all who came to them and for us. Ultimately, that Christ was willing to go to the cross to shed every ounce of his blood to somehow offer us protection and the gift of life. So I don't know, that seems pretty challenging for husbands, you know, in this um, kind of effort of loving um, your spouse as Christ loves the church. But in all of this, it expresses that it is so important for, for spouses to somehow be truly committed in love to each other, be willing to give of themselves over and over. It gives witness just to that very powerful sense of that sincere and selfless love. 
It's important for the health and well-being of families and even for our parishes and communities. So keep praying, keep doing all that you can to love and support one another as husbands and wives. In moments of crisis and at all times in our life, may we eagerly turn to Jesus. As we accept in faith what Jesus says, may we grow in our love for Jesus, truly present in the Eucharist. And as we are nourished by his very body and blood, may we receive what we need to sustain us on our journey to eternal life. We profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life for the world to come. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come here to offer our worship and to be strengthened in our faith in you. With confidence in your eternal love, we offer to you our needs and our prayers. For Pope Francis, Bishop Thomas, and all bishops, priests, deacons, and religious. May their dedication to Christ and the church be a source of inspiration for the whole world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our present president and government leaders, may they be granted wisdom and a sincere care for others, and may they find ways to unite us as we work to promote peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church throughout the world, May, be, may we be one as Christ is one, so that Christians of every tribe and nation may work to unite it as a single body of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For married couples, may their loving bond in good times and in bad be a sign to all of the value of a lasting commitment. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in consecrated life, especially the many women religious who make the choice to serve God each day through their work and prayer, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all Catholics during this time of Eucharistic revival, even when it is difficult, may we believe in the true presence of Jesus in the Eucharist and come often to be nurtured by the one who offers us eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick or suffering from disease or hardships, especially young people, may they find strength in the Lord and may God grant them healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Edwin Herman, may all the faithful departed know the joy of being with Jesus at the eternal banquet in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for the prayers written in the Parish Book of Intentions and our personal prayers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, you invite all to come to know you, to love you with all our heart, and to accept Jesus as the true bread come down from heaven. Strengthen us in our decision to follow you. We humbly ask that you hear and answer our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our offertory hymn is number 718, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, number 718. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord, for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church, O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. 
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, 
and Daniel, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into, into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, 
I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please join in number 552, Let Us Be Bread, number 552.
Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy and graciously protect and sustain us so that in all things we may please you. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Just a couple announcements or reminders. So um, the, for the, the St. Mary's Chicken Dinner or Festival, ticket, um, raffle tickets are available, again, in the back of the church. Take those, and please help us by, by selling those and um, giving people chances on the great prizes. Also, um, if you'll notice in the bulletin that they're working on, this, on the worker list. So if you've worked in the past and can, and can do it this year, you know you're on. But if for some reason you can't be here, maybe you got a wedding out of town or something, please let the committee know. Or maybe you haven't worked in the past and you want to. This is your year. You know, so also let them know, and they'll be happy to include you on that. It's a lot of fun and just a great event, obviously, here for the parish and for many. Also, um, um, th that you'll notice in the bulletin for here now a couple weeks has been the, the announcement about the Alaska cruise that my sister and brother and I are planning. So that's the first week of June in 2025. And so the travel agent that um, booked that for us was able to reserve eight cabins but only until September 1st. I guess there's great demand for that and all of that. So if anybody's thinking about that or interested, please contact me right away so um, that, that we can get, I, I can pass that information on to you and, and, uh, and if you're interested, ho hopefully get in on that. And, and then also um, just a reminder that this coming Saturday, the four o'clock mass will be here. It's still um, August the 31st, but so that four o'clock mass will be here and then the following week in September, will move to St. Michael in Hicksville. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Holy Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power cast into hell, Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 729, How Can I Keep From Singing? Number 729.